Greetings, everyone. Welcome once again for another round of a podcast sit down where we do a Q&A with a featured guest. Tonight's guest is audio drama creator, book author, and recurring podcast guest, Crystal Storm. How are you tonight? I am fantastic and excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me on. Absolutely. For those who might want to know, she's authored several different uh, fantasy adventure novels. She has her own audio drama network called Crystal's Imagination. If you need her for even an audio project, she'll probably take you up on that offer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how did a fangirl of Walking Dead and Buffy just decide to invest time in just crafting various <laughs> fictional kingdoms and other Lord of the Rings-ish stories. What was your oh, wow. driving force into wanting to be a fantasy author to begin with? <laughs> uh, so I, I definitely write more sci-fi than fantasy. Uh, but as we get started, you know, telling more audio drama stories, the fantasy's coming. Uh, it's but my, coming, baby. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Uh, my first two novels, The Awakening and The Ascension, they're both like really heavy sci-fi, but definitely sci-fi fantasy because I make some crazy shit into both those novels. So uh there's that and you know what I don't know how I got started right you just you know you just you just you just you're born a geek like it just happens right and then you love all these pop culture things like you said like Buffy and Lord of the Rings and Star <laughs> right, Wars <laughs> yeah like Star Wars and Star Trek and Fringe and Battle you know all that all that stuff and then um you know I've always been a writer so that's that's kind of really where my my love affair with creation and putting out content started is just even a uh, little bitty. I would just I've just always been a writer. Bitty so bitty. yeah, a little bitty. So uh, I'm I'm not that much taller either. I'm only four eleven. So I didn't I didn't grow up too much. <laughs> but yeah, just being a writer. <laughs> we don't judge here. Springboard and it's just you know all the things that come after that. Oh. Uh uh, what what about your upbringing? Were you already always part of a like a women's lit or after school writing no, programs? No, nothing like that. No, when I was, I mean, growing up, like my, uh, so I'm I'm very Gen X. So you know how that is. You know, parents are kind of absent, busy working. Um, you know, always Damn. supported. Yeah, always <laughs> the supported the creative stuff. But I mean, it wasn't like. Um, you know, yeah, you should grow up to be an author. It wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't our household for sure. Uh, but no, I didn't. I mean, I only started playing tabletop a couple years ago, which is like crazy to me. Um, for <laughs> everybody who is my age, they will understand when I say that I have role played before in AOL chat rooms. Shout out to the medieval tavern and the good old days of AOL RPG. We may some, zoom. Of your, yeah, some of your <laughs> listeners will know what I'm talking about there. And um yeah so no there was I did like student council and debate and all that nerdy stuff when I was in high school <laughs> nice yeah so I did do some research tell me how on earth you got started just doing editorials for hustler honey cups and jit uh, magazines of all places <laughs> I you okay so I haven't done that and and I know and I understand why you might think that I have because it wasn't me. And this oh was, this is the first oh time this wow yeah. okay this was yeah. the first thing that just came up. <laughs> uh huh. This, oh, this is why when I wrote my first two novels, I wrote under a pseudonym because there is a very famous stripper slash porn star named Crystal Storm. Jesus. Okay. Yep. Well, yeah. to the point. Here's a funny story. To the point that I was actually on a podcast a before, and. Uh, there is actually a porn site that has my picture instead of hers. <laughs> it's got one of my author photos. And, and I, and listen, if you ever Google, I look nothing like her. Like I'm a 411 mix. Literally, I was a click away. I could have yeah, just checked the main page. Uh, no, Jesus. it's fine. And like Crystal, she's like this humongous breastesses like stripper. And we look nothing alike, but they're actually, I don't know if they've ever fixed it. But they were given, it was hilarious. It was one of the most hilarious interviews I ever done with a host who like, I don't know if I believe you. And I'm like, listen, it's not, it's not me, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So where does the synarchy name come from? Uh, yeah. Um, it, the synarchy means rule by secret government. And I just, uh, I was in a phase in my life where I was, I had fell down into a very fun conspiracy theory, like spirituality hole. So that's kind of the very heavy themes that you'll find in the first two synarchy books. It was, it was fun to write. Oh, very cool. Yeah. 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 It was, it was a good time. 
uh where were you just a little backtrack uh where were you raised again uh i grew up all up and down the east coast oh, yeah wow. all uh, yeah i was born in virginia we live in north carolina i've lived in jersey and now i'm currently in louisiana damn yeah <laughs> yep 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 moving around a lot and I was told uh, prior that, you know, you were already part of the Who Would Win podcast show and yeah. when they were in L.A. And then when they moved around, they were still like, it's not the same. Let's bring her back. She's got to just weigh in as the judge, even if she can't do this full time. <laughs> yeah. No. So I, ha you know, it's always been remote. Um, I've always done Who Would Win remotely. Um, but there was a very, very old iteration of Who Would Win. And I don't even think you can find those shows anymore where I was the sole judge for a long time. Um, and then, you know, it does once... stop whatever the pod being. Yeah. Is, oh, point. yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, and then, you know, they've done this new amazing love the new iteration of who would win with James and Ray because they've got a great dynamic. So, you know, me and Delvin get to guest judge every now and then, which is fun. Sweet. Yeah. Um, so when did you and Delvin both get started with play some video games podcast? Uh, I've just been I've only been on play some video games once or I think once. Yeah, it was just once. Yeah. Uh, that was on play some video games. It was fun. It was He's just, on, uh, like, I don't twice. know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think Delvin does that pretty much on the regular with Dev. Shout out to uh, play some video games. But yeah, it was just me and uh, our other friend JB that did that. But now because we had such a great rapport with the four of us, uh, Delvin, myself, Dev and JB, we have our own podcast called All the Blurred Everything that airs bi-monthly. Um, and we've done a couple of shows so far. And so that will be up on the podcast network soon where we just talk about pop culture and video games. Oh, sweet. Time. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. All the Blurred Everything. Check it out, guys, when it airs. Yeah, definitely. When did you decide that, you know, podcasts are becoming a thing? There's so many do-it-yourself factions. When did you decide, I'm, I'm ready to take that leap. I'm ready to make time for that. It's not going to happen right away. There's going to need to be so many different variables casting people doing audio correction doing doing script changes if something just isn't agreeable as awesome as it sounded on paper when, when, when did that all just get fathomed up uh so podcasting started back in the days of blog talk radio when it was free <laughs> yeah and oh, wow. yeah yeah <laughs> podcasting actually started on accident i was getting interviewed on this guy's show and I don't even remember the name of it anymore because I'm terrible with names. Um, but I think you can still find some of those. If you like search blog, blog talk radio for my name, you can probably still find some of those episodes up there. But anyway, we did, we did the interview. And then after the interview, he asked me if I wanted to be a host. And I was like, sure. So I did a lot of like, I've interviewed some amazing people in like the fields of like uh, ufology and spirituality and all that. That's that I did that for years and years and years. And uh, spirituality, yeah. man, it gets everyone, brings everyone yeah. together. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's who doesn't like talking about UFOs. I mean, that's just, just fun. Um, so there was that for a while. Um, I've done a one-on-one -on -one podcast that I'd love to bring back at some points, just time and all that kind of stuff. But the audio dramas, you know what? I, it happened completely like on accident, literally on accident. I was just, Everything I, does. it always does. Right. I, I just stumbled into it. I had this fan fiction star Wars story that I had written God, I wrote eons that ago. like, yeah, eons <laughs> ago. Yeah, really, eons ago. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just try it with this. Let's see. Because I had thought about turning it into an audio book, but I'm like, you know, what if I could get some voice actors to just do this? And I literally just stumbled into audio drama and figured it out as I went along. Like I listened to a bunch just to hear like, you know, what the bar was. And I was like, you know what? We can do this. And I got an amazing crew of voice actors. Like they're so good. So to, to do legacy and yeah, I mean, we, we didn't do, there hasn't been a whole lot of script changes. Um, you know, there's definitely been, you know, the, the post-production work is, is where, you know, that time. I just meant just sometimes a voice actor ad libs a line. You're like, Keep oh, it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, some of the ad libs have been heartbreaking. Oh my God. These voice actors are breaking. I wrote the shit and they're breaking my heart. <laughs> it's been <laughs> great. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a quiz on this. Okay, here we go. Did oh, you boy. know? So there's a role playing game Wicca. There's a Wicca for everything. There's oh. the Taraya, Taraya Wicca. Oh, and there's boy. apparently a page dedicated in your name. I'm not making this up. Uh, that's a lit. There's got to be some kind of. See, you know what? Crystal Someone must Storm be is everywhere. Pranking you. The Crystal Storm is a hard mode, pre hard mode. 
mode oh. magic weapon that quickly fires a simply spread flood of tiny bouncing crystals. <laughs> Listen, I I'm here for it. That's exactly how I roll. <laughs> and it exactly. even shows a gift to display. That's awesome. <laughs> It That's is attacking awesome. a target dummy. No, nope. yeah, the Terraria. ability for you know, the I think my fiance plays Terraria. She's probably gotten that weapon before. Listen, so there you go. Yeah. This is actually my real name, and it's hilarious that how many like random things are named Crystal Storm. It's it's kind of funny. Crystal Storm. Yeah. <laughs> this is my lot in life. <laughs> yeah, thug life, lot life. There you go. So, why imagination? Do do you have a best on ending I, imagination? I do have a completely vast imagination. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Crystal's imagination is kind of the umbrella for like all of my writing. Um, When I go back to doing my one-on-one podcasts, you know, where I interview people, you know, all the books that I write that falls under that umbrella. Um, And then I have partnered up with three other amazingly diverse women and we have started the Tales of the Forgotten Fiction Network. Um, And that is where all the audio dramas are going to go and it's going to be on that umbrella. So you can go to fiction guys, check that out. Yeah, there you go. Tales of the Forgotten Fiction Network. You can go talesoftheforgotten.com to check it out right now. We're currently crowdfunding. Um, so we can pay our voice actors for our next slate of shows because the final two episodes of Legacy are getting ready to air. And then after that, we've got a teaser up for our horror, um, horror, why is it so hard to say that word? Horror audio drama uh, coming up. And we've just got like a full slate of shows that we want to do now. Now that we've realized that we can do this, we've teamed up with all these voice actors. So we're crowdfunding right now. You can get cool shit when you pledge. It's just like a Kickstarter. So just go to talesoftheforgotten.com. And yeah, we, uh, we, we can't wait. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't, I can't wait to tell more stories. Uh, please uh, show links to those. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Def- yeah. Tales of the forgotten.com. That's it. That's it's there. And you can uh, hit us up on Twitter at tales network. You can get us on Instagram. Uh, Instagram is at the tales network and we'll have a TikTok and all that tales. social media crap soon. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's time, exciting. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, but it's exciting. We're excited. We're excited. Our next, so legacy final two episodes, our last episode of legacy is going to air on the 13th of September. So coming up and then mid October, uh, is when our horror audio drama starts called Ooh. Don't Look. And there is a teaser of that already out, like a five-minute teaser out already that people can listen to if you just go to our go to our website. So we're we're super excited. I'm stoked. Uh, is yeah. it a horror anthology or is that giving too much away? No, no, it's going to be, it's probably going to be a five episode story. And it is about, uh, we've got a female protagonist, probably named Katie. I might change her name, but right now her name is Katie uh no this is woman versus monster and if you look at the monster it will murder the shit out of you so that's the challenge (laughs) Mm, so it's like the ring meets rawhead rex or something like that something like that yeah (laughs) nice yeah um well so you're introduced to all kinds of genres you've embraced technology you always Mm -hmm. embraced your author self uh and had a just very supporting community. Um, what, uh, and again, you have a voice acting demo reel. Uh, what has been your dream role to take on? Ooh, that's, that's, listen, I, I love uh, voice build acting. It up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've loved, ver- yeah, mostly just building it up. I love voice acting. I'm in a couple of different shows besides Legacy. I'm in this audio drama called um, uh, The Century. Uh, it's a legal thriller that's coming out. Uh, Ooh, yeah, yeah, it's called Century. I play uh, this elder woman named B. Uh, she is kind of the matriarch of this kind of cutthroat scandal meets, um, you know, pro- insert other legal drama name here. Um, so it is called the Century Century series. I think she's, but yes, yes, cent- the uh, the Century the series. And I don't know when it's coming out just yet. I know that we're it's all, all good. Working- yeah, all we're these all... last three things you've told me are doing I know. have a pace, so that's, that's fine. okay. That's okay. That's yeah, but it, it it'll be out soon, so I get to voice that. Um, I was in Race to Cadis's audio drama, uh, Reclaim Detroit, The Vampire, The Masquerade. I got to play mm-hmm. Roxy. 
Um, that was that was awesome. So yeah, I'm, you know, I'm just looking forward to kind of leaning into it and learning and having fun. But I really find that like being the director writer is where my true passion lies. So the goal is kind of to do audio dramas for another year or two, and then hopefully go to school and get into filmmaking. So that's kind of the next big step. Oh, film school. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, hopefully it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah, there you go. <laughs> I went to a college that was good at engineering, not so good at film school. Mm, got you. Like the got teachers you. had zero credentials. Just one of them had been had lucked out at putting their short, boring short film on HBO when they were doing that back in the day. And okay. another person was basically if he likes you, he would put your short on PB the local PBS. It's like so your favoritism. You're not actually giving us some constructive oh. how to. Yeah. Did you have some pretty good professors? Uh, I haven't gone yet. I haven't gone yet. Oh, just, uh, I mean, so, pre, yeah. pre call it. Uh, oh, pre, no, nah, listen, listen. I, uh, I went to, uh, I went to, I did a semester of college and I had so much fun not going to class. They politely asked me not to return. So my college career was a very quick crash and burn. <laughs> In all fairness, just get that associates and run away. Yeah, you know, but you know. Or just what? say I, you attended it. You don't yeah, have to say I did. You graduate. <laughs> I did. I did. I went. I went to you and I went to University of North Carolina. I did. I went for a semester. It was oh, fun. Wow. Yeah, I had a great time. <laughs> How was the atmosphere there? Uh as far as I remember, it was fine. It was kind of just your typical college like <laughs> yeah, atmosphere. It wasn't wasn't uh pretty you know, severe nowadays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I yeah, lots of stuff going on now. But uh yeah, when I went, it was just uh, you know, it was just a thing. It was a thing. Okay, nice. Yeah. You've been hooked on these various things, not having nothing that you would require, you know, asking a career advisor for, you know, life advice or anything. <laughs> you it literally just leaned and you took it upon yourself to accept the invite and go forth with it. How would you uh, encourage this for other creative content creators? Um, wow. Um, well, We're I know what it, so. Yeah, yeah. It really just depends on kind of what kind of a creative content creator you are. But just in general, I think, make sure that you are defining success in your own way. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, Thank and don't you. forget. Yeah, good, and, good indicator. Yeah. And don't forget to uh, just really appreciate where you are on your journey. And, and it's really hard to not compare yourself to anybody else, but don't do that. You know, your journey is your own. And whenever you decide to lean into this, do it. Um, I would say that learning and understanding that having a website and knowing about web design is one of the biggest tools that a creator can have, especially if you're a DIYer. Um, if you're not, holler at me, I'll, I'll help you out and, uh, and or, uh, you know, point you in the right direction. Uh, because I've, you know, I, my, uh, my making money job for a long time was web design and, you know, just having those skills Ooh. has, yeah, having those skills has uh, helped me immensely with building my own site, building the tales of the forgotten site and that sort of thing. So you've got to have that calling card, you know, another thing I will remind creators is, you know, we're all on social media, we're on Twitter, we're on TikTok, yada, 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 but all those things, you are on rented space there. Algorithms change, you know, things get shut down. People need to know where they can find you that is yours. And that is why I encourage everyone, I don't care what you do, have a website and have a backup of that site. So you have that digital calling card where all your stuff is, where people can contact you, that sort of thing. So just make sure you have it. That is the, that is the biggest thing I can tell anybody. Um, and you know, you got to learn the social media stuff. We all, some of us love it. Some of us are just like, oh God, why? Learn the social media stuff, pick a platform that you like, stick with it, try to stay consistent. That's really hard for us uh, neurodivergent folk. I know we got to, we got to try and um, you know, have try. fun. Yeah, you do. And you know, just have fun. Just have a, have a, you know, time is the one currency that we don't get back. So do what you love sooner rather than later. Thank you. I was actually going to bring that up. Uh, so <laughs> time management seems to be just hard something, well hard but also <laughs> impossible for some yeah uh, what are ways that you can remind others that this comes first every time like the content is there <sighs> you're having fun doing this but clearly despite all the days of whatever failing a term paper or uh letting someone down some people just can't get time management through your head so what are ways that you think are ways to just kind of remind everyone hey we can have fun later but right now you're holding up the flock <laughs> that's really hard that's a this really is why hard I question did this podcast for instance i had yeah. two friends who were big into film but mm -hmm. weren't good at prepping for the topics and getting everything edited on time and after mm -hmm. giving my two cents i decided how about i 
<laughs> yeah, follow my own advice and get a loyal crew and mm -hmm. we do this weekly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, when you're, so let me, I can break it down from your experience and say that when you are working with a group, uh, I, you know what, I can break it down from my own experience because I'm working with Anyone. three other diverse, amazing women. It gets um, a little fast, so you might as well have a group. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should. But I think it's also really important that when you, especially when you're grouping up to do this amazing thing with friends, um, listen, the world doesn't quite yet support us who are out here being creative and doing no. the awesome things. We're not, we're not Describing quite. it to people is still over their radar. And right. Like, we're radio that you download at any time at all. Get it? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's still, I mean, it's still, you know, the, the world is still, you know, built around this nine to five wheel and not, you know, us creatives out here doing what we're doing. Um, listen, we can make it. But how your definition of making it is and and, you know, the grind that is required and the luck, really, um, it's going to be, you know, that's going to be a bar different for everybody. But I will say that when you're working with other people and you're getting ready to jump into this, I think it's really important for you to be aware of what your strengths and weaknesses are um, so you can expect realistic things for people. You know, if, if, you know, if you've got somebody in your group who is a super introvert, then maybe they shouldn't be the community manager. Maybe oh, that person no. is, you know, you know, maybe that person <laughs> is better suited to, you know, doing the production stuff on the back end. And, you know, they I just, just say, lost a friend. Well, yeah, instead, and then there's no reason, like, there's no reason for that. You should be losing friends because you're having them do things that they just cannot, that's not what they're there to do. So it's, I think it's really important. I just that when mean you're, being an introvert, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, just, you know, just when grouping up with people, it's just really important to just know, you know, for everybody to just be very honest about where they want to contribute and how they want to contribute. And, you know, when it comes to time management, it's just a learned skill. And it's, I, you know, I am unmedicated ADHD right now working on being officially oh, diagnosed and to get medicated. So, you know, for me, it's every day is a, is a fight. It is an absolute fight with my brain. And sometimes I win and sometimes I lose. Um, so, you know what, <laughs> don't, don't be hard on yourself. Just know that, you know, it is a grind. Who would win? Crystal wins. Time yeah, listen. <laughs> It's hard sometimes. It's it's definitely hard. So I'm I'm still learning how to get that time management right. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Man. Yeah. So there's a bunch. Uh so uh, writing doesn't always come naturally. Uh what's your take on the whole writer's block does doesn't exist uh yeah. argument? Um, you know what? I feel like it's a, it's a doesn't, doesn't. I feel like there's a lot of truth to writing as often as you can, but I also am not one of those people that would be like, you must write every day. I don't think that's true. <laughs> that I think just it's exhaust you. Yeah. I, I, you know what, you know, there's some authors it works for, and you know what, this is just gets into how different people are. I mean, I know that there's, there's one author that I follow and he writes something like 7,000, five to 7,000 words oh, a day. And I'm like, Christ. that's crazy yeah 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 yeah. and I think that kind of it will reflect in like the quality of stories that you put out too but I mean listen for like you know somebody like Stephen King will hammer it in that you must write every day and who are we to tell Stephen King that he's wrong right so but um I think you know for, for King it, is wrong yeah King is right listen Hashtags. different strokes for different folks I think I don't think you need to write every day but I do think that you need to make it a habit I think that you need to be visiting your creative worlds more often than not I think when you have an off day, that's a good day to, to recharge, to do some mental health work, um, you know, to do, you know, if you're a, a self-published author like myself, there's all kinds of things that you can be doing on your off days, like building your website or networking or social media, or, you know, there's, there's other things that you can do to support yourself as an author, because it's a business. Even if you get picked up by a publishing company, they don't market for you. They market for Stephen King. So even when you sign that contract, there's still shit that you as an author have to do. And those are the, you know, you've got to make time to do that. Um, but just just make time for your creativity. That's that's all. Be, writer's block happens. It does. I've been struggling to write my third book. <laughs> struggling. So it, it's a thing. It, it is absolutely a thing. But I mean, it, I think really just important is to just make it a habit. Just make writing a habit, whatever that is for you. That's wonderful. Uh, who are your favorite authors right now who actually help paint a giant portrait? Um, uh, just bigger story description, building a world. Yeah. Um. Wow. So and hang do on. they influence your works by chance? Yeah, it's a great question. Um. Hang on. I'm going to find because my She's brain is hacking does... the internet. 
I am hacking the internet because uh, there's this book that I love. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, so give me a second here. It doesn't uh, exist. I know, it was a fake book. Isn't it funny when your parents or siblings will uh, mention something and you're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're mixing that up with like- Yeah, food. something else. All right, so yeah. Um, <laughs> so some of my favorite authors, um, I have a love-hate relationship with Dean Coots. Um, he, <laughs> God, I have such a love-hate relationship with that man. It's ridiculous. Um, I've, you know, I just, he's that paperback, you know, you know, um, written so many freaking books and you know so when he, yeah. yeah and you know when he gets it right he gets it he he really does get it right and I you know I can take as I'm writing this horror novel I can take some horror beats from him because you know when he when he gets tension right and when he gets the oh my god this is terrifying you right you you do I mean some of his books are, are really really great in that regards and other times he's just a great example of how why authors should have an editor and why authors should listen to an editor. And he's also kind of a warning tale of, you know what? Get the climax right, damn it. Because boy, when you pick up a Dean Coots novel, there's a 50-50 chance that you will get to the end and you will be so mad. <laughs> 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 you will be so mad at the way he ended that book. Um, there was another novel that I read last year called The Space Between Worlds. And I hope I'm saying this author's name right. I believe it's Micaiah Johnson. And it was the most beautiful sci-fi novel I read, I have read in the longest time and had so many um, just kind of, uh, I don't want to say political, I mean, because everything's technically political, but just so many just themes and beats inside of this book. That, that was definitely were, missing from the movie. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think there was a movie called The Space Between Worlds, not based on this book, no. Um, oh, The Space but, Between Us, my bad. That's yeah, a yeah, yeah. sci-fi with a bunch of famous yeah. actors that yeah 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 no matter. uh this is right. yeah a whole different <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no worries no worries but yeah i would they should make a movie off of this because it was a, just a beautiful novel there was just some beautiful themes woven in between this story um and a love story that hit me so good that there was like there's one page in this book that i will go back and i will just open the book and i would just read that one page just because it made me so happy and i'll close the book and i'll put it away again um <laughs> So it's yeah. sincere books, ladies and yeah, gents. That's a... <laughs> yeah, so I cannot recommend that book enough. It's called The Space Between Worlds. It's a sci-fi novel. Um, and it's just, it's chef's kiss. And I just kind of, uh, that book just kind of inspires me to just make sure that just, to, just it's in this knowledge that you can tell these amazing stories with emotional beats and there still be kind of this beautiful, poignant message in between all that. And I, I love that, just chef's kiss. Nice. Well, so since you're a giant bookworm, um, what? not so. enough. I have not. I have not read enough this year. I've been so freaking busy. Oh, I need the, to read this more. This is books. an earlier book. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to quiz you. Um, oh boy. Because I, warning. This has no answer. I'm just generally wondering if you might have an idea. So, <laughs> I once read this wonderful apocalyptic book, and each time I described it to everyone, they were like, "What? Well, it sounds like uh, Mad Max or Battlefield Earth." I'm like, "No, no. Okay. Well, we read this." My mother was always swearing by this book. I read this one book that was called like The Last Babylon, which was about like people who tried to raise a giant generation in a post-apocalyptic thing. It was very mind-blowing and entertaining. I'm like, it definitely wasn't that. <laughs> so I strongly suspect it might be Badlands, which I also know, you know, was a big book series, but I can't confirm. And I have no way to find out what this book is. It's just was like a bunch of just like, again, post-apocalyptic people like being constantly pursued by a tyrant and then they fight the so-called emperor at the very end. And it's, I don't have anything else to go on other than that. I got nothing for it. I'm sitting here like racking my brain. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, 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 I mean, that's a really broad premise, but I tell you what, next time I read a book like that, I'll send you a message. I'll be like, was it this one? <laughs> I read it back in 02. Oh, in wow. random school. <laughs> the yeah. library got no damn idea what the hell it could be like, yeah I, I don't know what to tell you i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> i hope i hope one day it just clicks i hope you just have a dream i even one day. joined a freaking what's that book group and no one had any answers oh, they were no. like next question i'm like yeah. you bastards come on maybe one day one day i think it's badlands but i have no way to confirm yeah unless i make time and read but... yeah yeah you might have to just make time and read it just to see Stinkers, that was a good mention. Uh, 
Do you think it's very common that a lot of people nowadays just don't seem to be familiar with what genres are what, how it can be a mixture, it can be a mashup? It seems like everyone's just quick to pigeonhole certain labels. Um, no, I think, you know, I, it, you know, it really just depends. I, you know, I think, um, it's really from a marketing standpoint that authors are so quick to put their books in a, in a certain box. You know, you, you want to let the audience know kind of what. They're so close to it. If you say yeah. even anything that is different. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta, I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it's a marketing thing. You gotta, you gotta let people know like what they're gonna, what they're gonna be reading. So I think it's, you know, it's just important to have comps as well. You know, you can say that it's a sci-fi fantasy. If you liked X, Y, Z, you will also like my book. That helps. <laughs> even better <laughs> what are some main things to also just kind of soak up like when you're for people who are just pitching a premise and getting a platform to share their story on whether it's an audiobook or whether it's a actual original book Wait, we have all these self-published sites but the pitch is important and some people just can't mat you know we all kind of sucked at one point or another at the elevator pitch some of us still do so mm -hmm. what what do you think are better ways to get people to do that? Because I, for instance, I have noticed some people when like you say like, oh, this is a uh, Scarface meets uh, uh, Terms of Endearment. You know, this is Die Hard meets Star Trek. You know, it's the X-Files meets the Twilight Zone. When you're having to pitch, like compare and contrast, some people already take offense that they have to compare something to something that's not. I'm coming up with an audio drama, for instance, on Hitman. And I'm already having to tell people this is not Pulp Fiction or John Wick. I, this was in development long before the former. And it's annoying to tell people that, hey, you know, you got to do some kind of comparison and contrast to get people to listen in and get an idea in their head. So what are some uh, formulas that you've utilized after a while to just get people to just lean in and actually listen? Uh, you can't fight that. Uh, and unfortunately, you you just you just really can't like listen. I was killing people way before JJ JR uh, fucking uh, Game of Thrones was okay. George R. R. <laughs> yeah, George R. Whatever his name was. Listen, Don't you, worry. listen. You I wrote concept, I wrote so. <laughs> way before he wrote Game of Thrones, and I was killing off characters the same way he was. But nobody read my book. Everybody read his. So the comparison, uh, you know, you just kind of got to eat it. Um, you, you, you know, there's there's no there's no way to fight that. Um, I think what you have to do is, in some instances, when it comes to marketing like that and pitching and getting people to listen, you just got to lean into it. You just you just I mean, it's important to set an expectation. You know, if it's if it's genuinely not you know a John Wick thing as an example, and you know people go and expecting John Wick, well, that's one thing. Um, but you just have to expect that you know popular pop culture is going to rule. And until we get as popular as some of these other shows, people are going to make those comparisons. So we've just got to, I mean, I understand how it can be frustrating, but you've just got to, I mean, that's just kind of, kind of where the, the, the bell falls. You just got to lean into it. And listen, if you're like John Wick, fucking say that shit. You know, if you're like, my story is literally John Wick, but better. And that gets people in the door. So they listen to your podcast, do it, sit on those, sit on those coattails until you can jump off and somebody's sitting on yours. Like one of the, uh, I'm, I suck at writing marketing stuff. Like I'm terrible. Like I, people have to write, I've got to get people to write marketing stuff for me because that's just not my thing. Um, but it was a reviewer who actually said, uh, one day said that the Sonarchy series was the Godfather meets Stargate. And I use that all the time now because yeah. at, if, listen, if that gets people in the door, then I'm, yeah. I mean, that's, that's just a great, great comparison. Um, so, you know, if, if it's one pop culture beat, like, you know, that that's not hitting and, but, you know, and you can find another one, do it, find another one, find another one that'll get people to listen. I mean, you know, I think one of the, one of the biggest reasons that people listen to legacy of star Wars audio drama is because I've got star it's because it's star Wars. There's no, it's literally, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't shy away from that. I mean, it's hundred percent a star Wars story. It's more based on star Wars, the MMO, the old Republic, but listen, if, if Star Wars fans, because, you know, you don't have to love Star Wars to listen to Legacy, but if you're there, then yeah, go listen to it. And hopefully the story and the voice acting and the production value keeps them listening to all 20 something of our episodes. But whatever gets people to listen to that first thing that you create, do the thing. Just, you know, try to make sure that, you know, you're as close to marketing it as you can be, as accurate as it can be. So people's expectations are kind of met there, but no, just lean into it.
yeah I, I, that's wonderful because if you don't have the confidence or passion then you know why do this yeah i mean listen marketing is hard marketing is tough for the best of us um it's you know some people are really great at marketing and some people struggle and i struggle with it so it's you know it's it's a hard marketing is a really hard thing to learn so I, I kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier is kind of just knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are and know when you're going to have to spend some money maybe out of your own pocket to get somebody to help you. There's nothing wrong with reaching into, you know, going, reaching out to a marketer and saying, hey, here's what my thing is about. Can you write me a two or three lines of a log line? Can you help me with some, you know, copy for the website? Whatever it is, do it. Do it, do Very it, nice. do it. So all together, what are some other platforms where people are taking actual novels and obviously you can publish your own thing on Amazon. What are some platforms you recommend? Um, let's see. Uh, Draft Digital, highly recommend. Smashwords for eBooks. Yeah. Baker and Taylor. Um, Baker sign up. Yeah. Yeah. Baker and Taylor for, for self-publishing as well. Um, so you can get print copies of your books. Uh, the biggest thing that I can tell authors is do not only put your books on Amazon. Here's why. One, don't ever put all your eggs in one basket. Number one. Number two, if you go to a local library and you tell them that they can get a copy of your book on Amazon, they will literally kick you out of their store. Local mom and pop indie bookstores are in competition with Amazon. Amazon cannot be your distributor for paperback or hard copy books if you are trying to get into some of these smaller bookstores. You have to go to different sites um, to do that. So, you know, that's the thing. So, yes. Yeah, so absolutely go to Amazon, go to the Kindle dashboard, get everything set up, do Amazon, but then use something like draft to digital smash. I think draft to digital and smash where actually combined forces now. So it's just draft to digital. Um, so go to draft to digital, get them to distribute you everywhere else. Uh, Kobo is a great site to go to as well, because you can set international prices. A lot of times in these other sites, when you go to price something internationally, it'll kind of just auto do it. And the prices might be a little bit off. So if you're doing kind of strategic um, pricing where your book's like $2.99 or $3.99 or whatever. If you go to Kobo and when you put your eBooks on there, it will let you set international pricing yourself. Um, so that's another one to check out. I've got my, yeah, I've got a bunch of different dashboards that I have to look at when I look at um, book sales and that sort of things for um, uh, my Sonarchy novels. Uh, I highly recommend anybody who wants to self-publish to check out uh, the Creative Pen, and that is pen with a double N. She does a weekly podcast. She's got an amazing website. She's a six-figure self-published author. Um, go learn from her. I can also recommend Whitney Hill. Uh, she is an amazing marketer, and she also self-publishes. Go follow both those women, learn everything from them, and then go self-publish. That's wonderful. And it is cool how you brought up some of the self-published uh, uh, tips and tricks because mm -hmm. uh, it is kind of like film where, you know, you can't uh, let other film festivals know that you they are not the only one which you've submitted your content to. Yeah. And Ingram Spark. Excuse me, not Baker. Ingram Spark. Ingram Spark is where you need to go. Thank you, Brian. Uh, is where you need. Yeah. Ingram Spark is where you need to go and uh, pay their little fee. And you don't do you don't don't do ebooks there, but that's for paperback, hardcover copies of your book. Go to Ingram Spark for that. If for mm. your ebooks, go draft to digital. Okay. Well, there shoot. You <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I hope everyone takes a lot out of that. Um, and when you're, you know, since now everything's digital as opposed to having to go to a factory and sell all these individual copies at various stores, um, uh, what's a good way to also have a proper um, author's biography and website, uh, especially if you don't have that experience? Yeah, 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 yeah. So website stuff. Um, okay. Uh, your domain name, uh, you can get fairly cheap. Uh, it would cost you like 13, no, I think, what is it now? It's like 15, 16 bucks a year, yearly to get your domain name. Uh, for the love of all things holy, when you buy your domain name, uh, you buy, you could buy it from, I recommend hoover.com. Some people go to GoDaddy. It's okay to buy your domain name on GoDaddy, but don't ever use GoDaddy to host your website. They're trash. Um, but if you want to get a domain name from them, fine, go for it. It's great. Um, but whatever email that you use to sign up for your domain name, make sure it's an email that you check. 
Because I cannot tell you how many web design clients of mine lose their domain names because they didn't use the right email when they signed up and they weren't getting the reminders that it was time for their domain names to expire. Because that's what happens. Like you're, you know, if you, for example, you know, crystalimagination.com, I, I pay for it yearly. I get a reminder at the end of every year that it's going to renew. And I got to go in there and pay them 17 more bucks to renew it, or I can buy it for 10 years, whatever the case may be. When you lose your domain name, somebody else can buy it. I will never own crystalstorm.com because some guy owns it and wants to sell it for like five grand. It's crazy out here. So make sure that you go and get your domain names and make sure that you renew them and you remember when to renew them. It's, it's important. Um, as far as website stuff goes, you can, uh, I highly recommend people check out WordPress. It's not terrible. It's lovely. It is easy to use. It takes a little bit of a learning curve, but it's worth it, especially when you get ready to expand your business. If you've got to just do something right now, you can do Wix, you can do Shopify. My only beef with those sites is that once you entangle yourself there, it's very hard to untangle yourself. And let me tell you, speaking from experience, you'll go to Wix and you'll be like, oh, that demo looks so pretty. And then you'll try to make your site look like that. And it won't look like that. And you'll be so <laughs> frustrated. So if you're going to spend the time learning how to do a website, you can contact me. I am actually doing one-on-one -on -one teaching for a short time right now. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah, I am uh, for a short time as well. I am opening up my books. So I will be taking on a few clients till the end of the year. So if you want me to build your website for you, I absolutely will. I'm happy to answer anybody's questions. They can shoot me a DM or shoot me an email. Happy to do that so you don't get scammed. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's something you have to invest in. And it doesn't have to be crazy. Like, I mean, you're just getting started out. You know, you haven't even written a damn book yet. You're just trying to make sure that you got a site, one page site, your picture, you know, a little bio about yourself that you wrote that you proofread with all your friends and that kind of thing, or you get somebody who's good at marketing to write it for you, um, links to your socials, a way for people to contact you. You're not Stephen King. Let people email you and that's it. <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Okay. Well, stellar. And so again, crystal imagination, you got like uh, five other things in the works right now or more like free? Um, oh my god well I guess what we're really what I'm really focusing on right now is the Tales Network um, so go to taleswithforgotten.com you can check out our crowdfunding you can check out check out our slate of shows um, I'm loving it because it's letting me lean into being a writer and a creator and a director at the same time so it's wonderful so I've got to finish the don't look up scripts or the don't look scripts and a bunch of other scripts I've got to get finished um, so it's letting me lean into being a writer so that's really amazing um, yeah you can also go to chrisimagination.com so you can see all you can learn about my books you can learn more about me you can check out the good news show which is a passion project of mine that I am absolutely going to circle back around to at the beginning of next year um, yeah, I, you know, I've got a lot going on, but right now really just focused on the Tales Network and our crowdfunding campaign, finishing up legacy and getting ready to tell more stories. And so, yeah, crystalimagination.com for those who are wanting to actually view this site. Uh, mm -hmm. Legacy of Star Wars drama is available on all podcast platforms. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you ever so much for just shredding some light, uh, just reminding us what a joy this whole process can be. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Love to do it. Will you be coming back to Who Would Win show? <laughs> Whenever they ask me, you know? So every now and then, Ray and Jay, Ray or uh, I that James slides into my DMs and tells me that it's time for me to, you know, judge a show. So I'm, I'm always <laughs> down. I'm always down to be on Who Would Win, but I never know when. <laughs> you never know, eh? Yep. Okay, well, stellar, stellar. So thank you ever a thousand percent for being on here. And Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Oh, we got questions? I. Now, one question from Delvin Cox. Oh, of course, here we <laughs> go. Uh, so will you be doing like a motion capture video to kind of go along with your audio dramas at some point on the side? I wish. So I want to get into film very, very badly, but I have to kind of curb my ADHD shiny object syndrome. And yes, eventually we are absolutely going to get into movies, visual novels, all that kind of stuff. Um, but we, I've got to build a much bigger team before we can do that. So, hey, go to talesoftheforgotten.com and pledge. <laughs> pledge allegiance to our crystal storm. There we go. <laughs>
The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up review show.